Okay, welcome to the North Area Committee meeting. Um, I aim to start now and finish around 7.30. That will hopefully give us time if anybody's got questions regarding the local plan or anything else that we're putting on tonight. Uh, welcome, uh, it's open to the public. And uh, <coughs> My name's Councillor Alan Hooper and I'm the chair of the local area committee. Before I ask other councillors to introduce themselves, I will hand over to Philippa from the Democratic Service of the Council to read the housekeeping arrangements. Thank you, Philippa. Evening, everyone. Thank you, Chair. Before we start, there are just a few housekeeping arrangements to mention. Please can I request that mobile telephones and other such equipment are switched to silent mode so as not to disturb the conduct of the meeting. There's no fire test planned for today. If there is an emergency evacuation, please take instruction from council staff present. The assembly point would be through these doors, right round the building, um, and in the all-weather, sorry, the all-weather football pitches in front of the sports centre. The toilet facilities are situated through these doors, turn right into the dining hall, then there's a door on the left. If you go down there, there's a disabled toilet that we can use, but if in doubt, just ask anybody. The meeting today is open to the public and will be streamed live and for subsequent broadcast via the Council's website. You should be aware that the Council is a data controller under the Data to Protection Act. Data collected during this webcast will be retained in accordance with the Council's published policy. By entering the meeting room, you are consenting to be filmed and the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting. One final thing to mention, we do have hearing loops available. If you'd like to use one, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Philippa. Can I ask the members and officers around the table to introduce themselves, please? Starting with Lewis. Good evening, Councillor Lewis Chin Chen, uh, Subsidy Shepherd and Ward. Good evening, Richard Williams, Councillor for Stannington Ward. Good evening, Mike Reevely, Councillor for West Ecclesfield Ward. And Councillor Penny Baker, good evening, Councillor for Stannington Ward. Hi there, Dave Lott, Community Services Manager for the North, supporting your councillors. Philippa Bedeck, Democratic Services. Good evening, Councillor Vicky Priest, Lady Stannington Ward. Good evening, Councillor Alan Woodcock, East Ecclesfield Ward. Good evening, Councillor Anne Wishika, West Ecclesfield Ward. Vic Bowden, East Ecclesfield Ward. And I'm Craig Campbell Q, East Ecclesfield Ward. I'll just give a brief summary of, uh, about, about the meeting and, wh and where we're going. Um, first, we'll deal with the formal part of the business. Apologies, declaration of interest and minutes of the last meeting. Then we'll move on to the recent gas incident and the water incident in Stannington. We'll then have public questions and petitions. An update on the referral policy, po policy committee to be given. We'll then uh, have an update from the Bradfield Parish Council from Vicky. We'll then move on to the North Area Committee proposed spending uh, and Dave, the area manager, first to give a presentation and a discussion. Members of the committee will ask to give recommendations of the report. And finally, we will have an update on the draft Sheffield local plan. So, Philip, if you could just give apologies, please. Yes, yeah, we have apologies from Councillor Julie Grocutt and Councillor Janet Riddler. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item number three, which is exclusion of the press and public. I don't believe we have anything that requires the exclusion of the press and public. So we then move on to item four, which is the members' declaration of interest on items 
for the, the um, agenda tonight. Have we any declarations of interest from members? That's a no. Thank you very much. We'll going to move on quickly to item number five, which is minutes of the previous meeting. They're in the agenda pack, uh, and it was the meeting of the 5th of October 2022. Could I ask members to approve as a crew record the minutes of that meeting, please? Show hands. Yep. Thank you very much. Item six is the Stannington gas incident. I now hand over to Tim Myatt of Yorkshire Water Authority. Thank you, Tim. You want to just come and use this mic at the end here, yeah? Thank you. I'm grateful that uh, we have in attendance uh, the Yorkshire Water tonight. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone and uh, thank you Chair for inviting us to attend this meeting. Uh, my name is Tim Myatt and I'm the Head of Corporate Affairs at Yorkshire Water and uh, with me tonight we have uh, Nathan Sunderland, Manager of Asset Planning and Network Engineering and Vicky Scroggins who is our Customer Liaison Advisor and has uh, been leading on communication regarding our work on Bankfield Lane. Um, and uh, if there are any questions tonight, then I might call on my colleagues to, to help me answer those questions. So, uh, firstly, on behalf of Yorkshire Water, I would like to apologise uh, to all those who suffered inconvenience or distress due to the incident in December. The impact on residents, particularly those who lost heating during a very cold weather period, was significant, and we deeply regret that our network was involved in the incident. As a company proud of our Yorkshire identity, with the vast major majority of our staff living and working in Yorkshire, I can assure you that our team members understood the importance of resolving the issues in Stamington and Hillsborough swiftly and, attempt and attempting to quickly return some semblance of normality to the area and the residents living there. Uh, I will go on to cover our ongoing investigation into why this incident happened and how we're trying to make sure something similar doesn't happen again. However, firstly, I'd just like to touch on the incident itself in, in December and the role our team played at the point in supporting residents and partners. So as many of you will be aware, on the evening of the 2nd of December, treated water began to escape from our 10-inch main on Bankfield Lane, and the significant water, which is a significant water supply main. Within four hours, this had been repaired, and there were no issues remaining with the Yorkshire Water Network itself. As the present scale and impact of the gas... Uh, the, of water in the gas network became clear, we stepped up our support for Cadence. We offered support from our team, our contract service partners, and our supply chain. Throughout the incident, our bronze and silver level incident management teams were coordinating support to Cadence with incident managers on location each day until the 17th of December. Our support on site during this period, including dig teams assisting Cadence to access their network, uh, tankers assisting cadence to transport water from their network, gas safe engineers restoring gas networks in the area, uh, members of our customer experience team liaising with cadence and the council, and 10 staff members who were conducting welfare checks uh, throughout the area uh, until the 17th of December. Uh, by running our incident management teams daily, we were able to step up support as required and were able to request uh, uh, respond to requests for further assistance from Cadence and other partners, including the Council, which were, with which we were coordinating through the Tactical Coordination Group and the Strategic Coordination Group. Throughout the period, we used a uh, variety of communication methods to try and keep residents up to date with what was happening and how they could access support. This included targeted text messages, our websites, door-to-door -door visits, letter drops, press releases and media appearances. We coordinated this activity with partners, uh, such as the joint on-site press release on the 8th of, press conference on the 8th of December, which was attended by our Director of Water. And throughout the entire period, we were really grateful for the support uh, from Cadence and from the Council uh, in ensuring that residents uh, receive support and receive communication about what was happening. As the entire agency response to the incident began to have effects, we quickly moved to, on to put a Yorkshire Water Payment Scheme in place for residents to help offset additional costs and expenses residents may have incurred. To clarify, this is separate to payments that Cadence themselves have made for the loss of gas supply. 
and prior to Christmas, the majority of homes who had lost gas supply had received an automatic £60 payment from Yorkshire Water. It took a little longer for some properties where we lacked certain details, such as the payee or the account details, but this is now largely complete. We also opened a bespoke scheme where residents could claim for payment above that £60 if they incurred additional costs, such as water damage or increased electricity costs. This has been a particularly popular scheme with hundreds of claims uh, received and resolved, although these do take a little longer to process due to the individual nature of each claim. If any residents here or any councillors know of any residents uh, where they haven't yet received a payment but have applied for one, then uh, please let us know tonight and we will happily pick that up. We do understand that residents want to know why the damage to our system happens and how it entered the gas network, uh, but this is still the subject of an investigation and our insurers have appointed an independent forensic expert for Goins to conduct that investigation. Until that is complete, we aren't able to confirm the cause of water entering the network, the gas network. On the 9th of January, our team began work to replace and relocate the section of Maine, which was damaged in December. This work will continue until approximately the 10th of February and will unfortunately include traffic management. Uh, Vicky has been working to inform residents of the works, including door-to-door letter drops. Relocating our water main away from the gas main is in accordance with best practice and should reduce the the chance of a similar incident occurring. Taking a wider view of network resilience in Stannington, our team are reviewing performance and how we can reduce the chance of further incidents. This includes modifying the pumps to reduce the chance of shocks to the network, which we know is transients within the industry, and also installing variable speed drives at the pumping station, which will reduce the chance of these shocks. We are also looking at reducing pressure in areas of the Stannington network, and in the longer term, conducting mains renewal on assets with a greater risk of bursts. This should all reduce the risks of further incidents in the area. We know that whatever the outcome of the incident into the cause of the burst, there are lessons for us to learn as a company. We have participated in a multi-agency incident debriefs and we are also conducting a thorough internal process as well. As mentioned previously, we deeply regret this incident, and we are keen to increase resilience in the area. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, if any resident or uh, councillor would like to raise something with us around uh, compensation, then please do raise that with us after this meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much, Tim. Uh, I'm just going to show a quick slide um, from Cadent, uh, and then we'll, we'll look at any questions regarding uh, the, the gas leak? Yeah, so this is just a, uh, we've already seen the Yorkshire Water information. We have that information from Caden as well. What we've done is summarise that in terms of a printed piece of paper, which is on the back table. And after tonight, we'll ask Jenny to put any copies of that um, into the library so that people are aware of that. That's just reproducing the information that we know is on the internet, but we're very conscious not everybody is on the internet, so we wanted to make some paper copies of that available. After the meeting, the Yorkshire people will still be here and we'll take uh, any questions, you've got any personal questions regarding your personal circumstances. Do you want to make any comments now at this point in the meeting? Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, um, so I'll I'll come to Nathan after I've just said this to to double check that what I'm about to say is correct, but we are, uh, our insurers have appointed a independent body to investigate and Cadence insurers are also appointing an independent body to investigate. Yeah, just to add to that, we have had questions from our regulator on it as well, so not only are we speaking to to you guys, but the regulator has been interested and will be interested in the outcome of the investigation that's taken place. Anyone else want to wish to make a comment? Uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Hi, Jay Foley, uh, local resident, Labour Party member. I'm just interested in who pays for this ultimately. You know, is it the service users who end up with higher bills as a result of the failure to renew public infrastructure. I mean, it kind of 
this has been a, a major incident for people in this area. And yeah, they'll get compensation. Yes, they'll get um, you know things fixed. But as a society, as a, as a community, we we kind of want answers, don't we? Because we actually want to know who pays ultimately through our bills. I'm assuming. Sorry, just makes me a bit angry, really. Thank you. You want to comment on that? Is it, is it possible? It's a, a wide-ranging and a big question, that. <laughs> yes. In, in terms of full payers, you've, you've kind of answered it in the fact that it's the residents of Yorkshire that, that pay their bills and we're funded by, by the bill payers. Um, the objective of the company is to reduce the number of mains repairs that we have, but we're, we're constrained by um, the amount of Bill, the, the amount of bills that we can, we can charge customers as well. So when we're funded in five year price reviews and the regular states the amount of bill increases that we can um, charge customers and it's usually in line with inflation. So that caps the amount of capital investment we can do to renew the assets. Ideally we, could, we would like to renew a lot more but given the funding constraints set upon us we have to accept a level of repair that needs to take place, unfortunately, i.e. you do get mains failures across the region. We have about 7,000 a year, um, but we have 32,000 kilometres of mains, so when you put it into context, it's, we don't have that many mains failures on our asset base because it's so big, but we do appreciate certain incidents do happen that have a big impact upon local residents, like the one that occurred in December. Pay. I just wonder if shareholders pay in uh, terms of dividends. I think it's, that's a very broad question. And uh, in terms of how, how we plan our asset maintenance, it's done through uh, five year price re reviews, and that sets our uh, expenditure for the next five years across all of our investments across wastewater and water networks. Is there anyone else? Yeah. All right, good evening. Sean Ebenezer. Uh, I just wanted to find out how you worked out a compensation of £60 per household when actually the main wreck of this whole incident was caused by Yorkshire Water for Caden Gas, who offered to pay an upward of £900 per household. And you uh, really cost this whole um, incident, cut your payment at £60 and want people to sweat out how they qualify for more than £60 compensation for those many days during the festive season. I don't think it's fair. So, um, uh, there's a couple of points there. One of them is about what caused the incident and we would say very much that that is still the subject of the investigation and that still hasn't yet been determined. The second thing is around the £60 payment, it was made to all homes which were, we were informed had had a loss of gas supply across that period and throughout. We don't know for what length because homes had different experiences in terms of their, their, the length of time that they didn't have gas. Um, and so we made the £60 payments um, so everyone would receive something. And the bespoke scheme, which is also possible in the details of which are on the, on the paper at our desk at the back and have been on the screen, um, would allow residents to speak with somebody and, and explain exactly what the cost has been to them. And then they can, they can discuss, you know, that, that can go higher than the £60. Oh, and um, the, the, the Caden payment itself was done because it was their network which was affected and therefore they had statutory um, duties to pay a certain amount. Um, I'd like to um, bring in now uh, Councillor Penny Baker, uh, one of the councillors for Stannington uh, with comments and some uh, addresses of thanks. Thank you Penny. Thank you, Chair. I would normally stand up for this, but the mic won't let me. So apologies for remaining seated. Um, 
I really, when Alan suggested that uh, it would have been an idea if somebody said thank you tonight, I was absolutely delighted to take up the opportunity because I think there's a lot of thank yous to say. I think when it hit us on the Friday night, not many of us knew it had even happened. It was the Saturday morning when people began to realise just how bad the situation was. And well, I'd say actually probably not the Saturday morning. But by the time we started moving around and trying to find what had happened, about 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, Caden was already on site and they were already at Lomas Hall. And I think that's one of the first thank yous to the Lomas Hall group for allowing us to take over the village hall, which is, it was the centre of the village and became the centre of the village. Everything happened there. As, as the time went on over the weekend, we began to realise just how bad the situation was. And Caden brought in the, the Red Cross, British Red Cross, going round door to door in, in Stanton. I never thought I'd say anything like that, but they were lovely. They were helpful, they were supportive, and they brought to light some of the issues that we weren't aware of. So they were really helping, and I think a thank you should be said to them as well. I think our pubs, all three of them, Top House, Minis and the Peacock, were brilliant, even if they didn't have gas. They had hot drinks and they had warmth and they welcomed everybody in. And as they went back on, they had hot food and cared for people. The village hall was sending round trays of bacon sandwich to the Caden people and the people who were supporting Caden and were with them because some of them were from um, Yorkshire Water, some of them were from British Gas, as you all know because you, you were all there. Well, you were not quite all there. Some of us came back to it, which isn't very nice. Uh, and we, um, you know, we have all them to thank. And they were thanked personally by the people of Sunnington. They were polite, they were informative, they were efficient, and they did a really good job. So I think it's really important that we thank them, not for just doing their job, but for doing it in a, a very supportive way. I think we want to thank the primary schools for reopening because it could have been quite easily there for them to stay closed, but they didn't. Uh, we thank Christchurch in Sunnington for opening its doors when it could. I mean, it was already supporting the schools for their Christmas panto plays and things that had to go on one side. Um, I think going down my list, it, it gets immense, but on the Tuesday night, Sheffield City Council began to realise, and Caden, and everybody on the doorstep, began to realise just how bad the situation was. We weren't talking about a few hundred houses. We weren't talking about a thousand houses. We ended up by talking about over 3,000 properties. It was amazing. And then we got invaded by the media and everybody else. So, but they were, everybody was there, and this is my big thank you. The people who were affected were supporting their neighbours. They were supporting the lady at the end of the street who they knew was in on her own. They were contacting us and telling us there were problems. They, if somebody, Facebook just came alive. I mean, what did we ever do without Facebook? Facebook came alive. Somebody said, they haven't knocked on my door yet. I haven't got a heat. Where are you? I'll get it for you. I know somebody dropped up to Loma's Hole, picked up a hot plate, or a heater, and went down there and gave them and supported each other. The community supported each other, and they supported Caden. I mean, I, I will never forget going down the street on the Acorn Estate, and this lady coming out with a tray full of drinks and chocolate biscuits and fussing about the workmen who were not in, the, in her home, but her two neighbours' homes, who she'd got the keys for because they'd got young children and then got off to family. Now, you know, that was an amazing thing to do. I, this lady wasn't the only one. It was a long, drawn-out situation in freezing cold circumstances. And I suppose if the lady's here, pick me up off the hair mat like a stay off the floor. I'm really grateful to her as well because I can't get up on my own. It was like a dating ring. But everybody worked together supported the people that were helping them and as people got back on that extended again so if somebody got back on gas then they cooked a meal for their next door neighbour 
the, the hot food trucks came out and in really cold nights people were queuing up and taking food for the next door neighbour. Everybody was helping and supporting each other. I think there's also thanks should that should go out to uh, the headmaster here, Mr Barraclough, who opened, opened this school so that people could come here on the Saturday and the Sunday and have showers and use the area and outside here to have hot food and drink because they couldn't get it in their own homes. It was an awful time, but, but I don't think we'll ever forget it. Well, I don't think we'll ever forget it because of the community atmosphere, the help and support you gave each other, and I think that is the last and most important thank you. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you very much, Penny. Um, I don't know if we've missed anyone, but uh, I would like to thank uh, the Sheffield City Council uh, for put, putting up and, and putting in and coming in and doing what they needed to do. I'd also like to thank the local team uh, with Dave uh, and, and his members uh, for the, the work. They were here, based here for a fortnight, helping as much as they could. Uh, and I'd also like to thank the Sheffield City Council for the pre-Christmas party which yes. was put on. Uh, very warmly received, lots of young children and families uh, coming and celebrating pre-Christmas after the horrendous sort of fortnight that they've been through. Uh, it was very well received and we received back a very warm thanks from them. So that was something else. I do hope we've, we've covered everyone uh, in there, but there's evidently still much work to be done to get things certainly back to where they were prior to this uh, incident. Thanks, Tim, for your presentation. And, yeah, thanks for it. Afterwards, they will be, be here if anybody wants to speak to them uh, about personal problems or issues. Jenny? Um, could I just say that it wasn't just an awful incident, it was also very historic. And so Stannington Library is asking people... Um, thank you. Stannington Library is asking people to... Um, if you can just spare a bit of time to pull together your memories of what happened to you and any pictures that you've got or documentary evidence and drop them off at the library or email them to the library, we're going to compile an archive. Because you can get bet some poor child in the Forge Valley School is going to have to do a project on it in 10 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some information um, stored away and archive it. Absolutely. It's really good local history. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. I think that's something that uh, perhaps the local council may wish to take up. And certainly, I think through the North Lake, uh, we'd like to be involved with that as well, please. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Richard? Thank you, Chair. I think also we should thank the uh, Stellington Community Centre who opened their doors yes. to allow people to get the, the, the free meals that were being offered. I went down there a few times, and certainly it was a nice, warm place to sit, cause especially when the cold snap happened. So thanks to them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I just wanted to say that I, I, a lot of people have said to me that they really appreciated the sort of on the on boots on the ground approach that Olivia Blake, the uh, the local MP, took, and she kind of brought her team out. And I know at one point, I know there was a huge amount of people um, from the community who were supporting one another. The the, the, the response was fantastic. I know that. Um, from the Labour Party, we put the call out across the whole of the city. And I know on, on one occasion we had a tally that there were 60 people, Labour Party members, that had come from all across the city into Stannington. And I think it's always a helpful thing if people from across the city come and actually have a look at Stannington, because they, they don't always do that. Um, so I would like to extend my thanks to them. And while I'm on the mic, I would just say I think people will make their own judgment about whether the compensation... Um, from Yorkshire Water is proportionate to the suffering that people went through. Um, I'm just looking to see whether I'm going to get into trouble. Um, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, the chief executive of that company is, is very well rewarded. Much more than 60 quid is going there. The shareholders are very well rewarded. And I think we have to make a decision uh, as a community and as a society about whether we think that an essential fact of life as water supply should be something which takes money and generates private profit rather than being invested into a reliable uh, utility for everybody where we don't have these failures of the infrastructure. People will make their own views. 
Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to say that Sheffield is known for the, the communities it's got, and I think this is a, an excellent example of the community coming together, working together, and doing things for everyone. Thank you. If we can move on now to public questions and petitions. I have three. Are there any petitions firstly from anyone? I'll, t I'll, I'll take the questions now. Jenny, if you'd like to come to the front, please. Um, Jenny Van Tintren, co-chair of SPARC, which is Stannington Pavilion Renewal Committee. Um, we're a consortium of local groups which was set up in March 22 um, to save Stannington Park Pavilion and with a view to raising funds to replace it with a new purpose-built um, Stannington Brass Band rehearsal room and community space. Um, we submitted an expression of interest to the Council on the 14th of June 2022. Um, I have a copy if anybody wants to see it. And we received an acknowledgement and a couple of emails saying that no response could be provided due to capacity issues and many other higher priority projects across the city. It's now four months later and we still have no proper reply, nor any indication of when someone might be willing to even start talking to us. This is unacceptable, especially as our expression of interest was specifically directed at relieving the council of a burden of costs through a transfer of the building to the community. So my question is, would the council please agree to meet us soon to discuss the expression of interest and agree a way forward? What proposals does the council have for consulting with the community about the future of the pavilion? What do they, proposals do they have to meet the need for more community space? And what are the timescales for the review of community buildings that was authorised at the meeting of the Finance Subcommittee on the 7th of November, Agenda Item 6? And how does the council propose to involve local communities and consult publicly on that review? And I have another question from Action for Stannington, which I'm also chair. Bad luck, you've got the wrong person here. Um, Action for Stannington has offered repeatedly to partner with the council and raise money for a repair project to safeguard the pavilion in the short term because it's looking in a very sorry state. We, the last time we did this was um, in 2012 and it's now needed again. Who is currently responsible, please, for agreeing such projects and when will they talk to Action for Stannington? Um, you might not want to answer those questions now, but I can leave them with Philippa and you can tell me later. But if anybody can give me any hope now, that would be wonderful. Yeah. We, we, we may need to take some, some of that away, but we will give you some response now. Richard, first of all, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know whether it's a coincidence or just good fortune, uh, but I actually had a meeting this, uh, this afternoon with Ashman Ali, who is second only to Kate Joseph's in terms of res uh, responsibility for this area. Um, I share your frustration, Jenny, with the lack of movement. Um, I've been trying very hard, almost on a, a weekly basis, to get something going for you. I don't want to preempt or overpromise, but as I came here tonight, I, I checked my emails, and it was actually Ajman Ali saying, please could you give me your, the contact details of people I should be speaking to. Um, I shall do that, in all honesty, probably tomorrow morning. It may, no, I'm not going to say it may lead to nothing, because it won't, because I know the guy very well, and he is a very determined character. The least you will get is a grown-up conversation. I hope you will get a lot more than that. Does anyone else wish to come in? Penny? Sure. Just to say, Chair, that we're really grateful for local people who have shown an interest in this. Uh, we were very disappointed when a group put in a bid to try and buy um, the old top and it failed. It was very disappointing. I'm really pleased that you are helping and working towards maintaining a pavilion in the park. It's really good news. Thank you. Yeah, there is an ongoing um, report and work on, on the buildings in, in Sheffield, uh, the buildings in uh, housing, the buildings in parks. So that's ongoing. Hopefully we'll get some results of, of where we're going uh, and where we are with repairs and uh, the, the state of some of these buildings. And no doubt the one that's hit the 
news over the last autumn is the rose gardens in Grace Park. So but there are a number of parks where there's not been much or any maintenance on the pavilions and or buildings there. So, yeah, it's urgently we need to look at these if they are savable, if they're in a fit state, or, or what we need to do to dispose of them. It's, it's that, that serious. But thank you, Jenny, for both questions. Thank you very much. Richard. Just really, regarding your other questions, if you could send them to me and also to uh, Ashman Ali, um, that would be very useful. Thank you. Yeah, they'll need, they'll need to come to the, the North Lake so we can yeah. formally minute them and respond to them and have a written answer to you, Jenny. Thank you. Two questions. I don't know whether the, the people are here. It's Pete Horrell. I'll read it out briefly. Um, it's a question we received yesterday. Uh, he's a Stannington resident and he's asking about uh, the local planning officers working with the mobile phone companies to establish a location in Stannington for a mast. Uh, he's looking at the very poor uh, broadband uh, and, and limited access. So he's looking at um, where we can site, hopefully, a, a, a mast. Uh, there have been three, apparently three mast plan applications has been rejected. Uh, we will provide him with a written answer to that. Do you want to come in? Yeah. yeah uh, it's, it's a very difficult one because on the one hand you want to protect the environment but we all like our mobile phones. Um, my suspicion is the mobile phone companies try and pick locations which suits their own objectives rather than reducing the impact on the local area. We had one which was outside, right at on the Stanton village. It was one of their monster uh, sites. And you basically couldn't have put it in a more open position in the whole of Stanton village. Right outside Manor House. Yeah. And, yeah, without getting into the details of whether mobile phone masts are, have medical issues, etc., etc., I just think that they're citing them where it suits themselves rather than suiting the local community. And that's why it needs, again, a grown-up conversation between the planners, planning department, um, local people, and these mobile phone companies and saying, look, let's get serious here. There must be places where we can hide these things away, which doesn't affect their operational standards. Um, and if it's going to cost you a little bit more, Mr. Mobile Phone Company, well, you make lots of money anyway, so I'm sure you can afford it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Uh, the third question is um, from uh, Jim Conibert. Is Jim here? No. His Stannington resident um, he's asked actually five questions um, is a, relating to the local plan document. Uh, some of it is um, how the format it is and how difficult it is and the length of it, etc., etc. Uh, and then he moves on to various parts of that and he closes with um, the congestion uh, around the A61 Mailing Bridge Home Lane, that area. <laughs> Uh, and then he's asking about planning game money and could that be spent on transport issues and community infrastructure. So I'll hand this over to the local plan people tonight and there's something to, for them to answer, hopefully. Uh, they've not received it and here we go. Very, very short notice, we've just received this, I think, either late yesterday or today. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chair. Yeah. Um, Oh, sorry, Richard Holmes from the uh, Planning Service um, at City Council. Um, first question about uh, asked about breaking down the plan into areas. Um, <coughs> it does do that. Part one of the document uh, has several sub-area policies, and the northwest sub-area is, is one of those. So it does have specific policies for different parts of the city. Um, it doesn't correspond to the local area committee boundaries, and that's something we tried to do as far as we could but it, particularly in the case of the north area as I'm sure you're aware it's such a wide ranging area 
we consider that certain parts of the north like have different kind of uh, strategic characteristics. So we, we made a decision to have different uh, sub areas for, say, Stocksbridge Deep Car, Chapel Town, Ecclesfield, for the northwest where we are now. So that was a, a decision we made. Um, he asked about the key proposals for Stannington. Basically, there's very little change proposed in this area, and that's because the, the green belt boundary is quite tightly drawn. Uh, we're not proposing to, to alter the green belt boundary. Um, so for, for studies in this area, not a lot of change proposed as part of the plan. Um, There's a question about the um, traffic flows that were mentioned. That's probably something that I would have to ask my transport colleagues about. Um, there is a supporting um, report, a transport strategy, which uh, feeds into the, the local plan. Um, but, yeah, that's something I probably need to um, ask a co colleagues in transport about. Uh, the planning game on the, the community infrastructure levy is, uh, is collected uh, citywide and decisions on spending the strategic uh, part uh, are made separately to um, planning decisions. So that's something that st the Strategy and Resources Committee of the Council uh, would make decisions on. 15% um, of that community infrastructure levy does go locally to uh, individual wards and to parishes. Um, and that can be used to deal with kind of local issues, which could be um, congestion in a local area. Um, and then there was a question about developments in Stannington Park. Um, that's probably a development management issue, although there is a policy in the draft plan uh, for uh, green spaces, which generally seeks to make sure that we, we kind of don't build on green spaces. So, um, but there the, the could be uh, exceptions to that rule. So. I think that's covered everything. Thanks. Thank you. Now we'll move on then to the update on referrals to policy committees. Um, at our meeting in July 2022, we were asked a question uh, about buses uh, in Grenaside, um, looking at the 135 and the M92 and the difficulty of actually getting from Grenaside into Hillsborough to connect with the rest of the transport system. Since that was uh, asked the question, we've actually lost in total the 135 uh, from High Green through to Grenaside through to Hillsborough and through to town. Um, the issue was, uh, the question was resolved and the resolution was to look at uh, the sending it to the South Yorkshire Mayor and the Transport, Regeneration and Climate Policy Committee. Uh, in the end, both of them really have finished up with the South Yorkshire Mayor, uh, and the, the answer is quite, quite long, but um, it's, it's referring to the bus companies uh, of how they operate, and they can operate virtually how they want. Um, so, so we are where we are, I think. Um, and we're looking now to April and seeing which what's going to happen uh, along with this uh, in, in the north um, we have now without the 135 service from High Green uh, no direct link from High Green as well to, to Hillsborough and the Super Tram etc so that they've only now one bus that goes number 1A1 that goes uh, down the northeast corridor into Sheffield uh, anybody wanting to get there would need to catch two buses so from High Green to Chapel Town, and then catch the 86 service, which often is unreliable uh, into Hillsborough and the A61 corridor. Uh, David, you want to come in with the, the other? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to make members of the public aware, as well as that uh, response being on the internet, we also do have copies in the report pack if, you, if you'd like one tonight, as with all the papers uh, whilst we're talking about referrals on to other committees, I think uh, people will be aware that we've moved to a committee system within the council. There are two highways matters that we just want to formally raise for, for, for the minute of two areas that have been discussed with your councillors at their briefings, which are matters that we would like the, the transport committee uh, to look at because they're questions of wider policy. So one is around um, rural speed limits. So 
uh, Stannington councillors have been approached about the speed on Rails Road and Bingley Lane with a request to look at measures and look at speed limits. Uh, and the view is that there are many areas of Stannington Ward where there are challenges and issues, and so therefore um, the committee is asking for the Transport Committee to take a wider view on its policy on rural speeds. Um, the other matter, which has again come to your councillors, is uh, around a request in Chapel Town in Smith Street for a residence parking scheme. And the initial response was that the current council policy is not to put in residence parking schemes outside of the uh, city centre. So the LAC will be asking the Transport Committee to review that policy and to consider um, what such a scheme would actually involve and, and to report that back. So um, we'll make both of those policy referrals up to the Transport Committee, Chair. Yeah, I need uh, agreement from, from... Just to add that the, the Smith Street um, is a request from the, the residents themselves at Smith Street to have this parking scheme. Uh, it's a road that's perhaps a dead end. It's perhaps 200 metres long uh, with no real off-street parking. So they park there. Um, it's in the centre of Chapel Town. And Chapel Town itself is virtually devoid of any, any parking. Uh, and there are applications. There's one application where uh, there's 35 uh, apartment stroke dwellings with no parking whatsoever, so it's just adding on the parking situation all the time. People used to park in Asda Car Park when there was no restrictions, but now it's down to a limited two or three hours, uh, and it is a, the train station, uh, both to Sheffield and Barnsley and beyond, uh, and of course, people want to park the cars, park and ride, but it's not possible in Chapel Town. So if we could seek agreement on those two, that they go before go, great. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, I think it's a really important principle of, of how we run democracy across the local authority. I, I believe I'm the only elected member who's part of the North um, LAC uh, here, who also happens to sit on the uh, Transport Policy Committee. Um, I, we meet, we're meeting tomorrow and I'm going to try and see if I can raise it as a question under any other business. I, I think there's a more circuitous route to be able to kind of the local councillors in our part of the city to say we think that the city-wide policy needs to be changed so that we can get through the things that our local residents need and the fact that it's quite difficult to do that at the moment shows some flaws with our system and where we need to kind of keep reforming. So I will, I will try and ask that tomorrow as a member of that policy committee and we'll see how far it gets. Should we hold our breath? I don't know. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if you just show agreement for both those then, unless anybody has any comments? No? Agree. Yeah, agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Um, move on now to the uh, number nine, which is the Bradfield Parish Council, and Councillor Vicky Priest is just going to give us a, a brief update. Thank you, thank Chair. You. Uh, just very briefly, uh, just to say that Bradfield Parish Council supports groups and organisations within the parish. Uh, we've provided funding for a new... Uh, football pitch on Wadsley Park Village along with other money from the like. Um, we continue to supply uh, parks with new equipment and as already has been said that uh, Parish has got some SIL funding and we're continually looking for um, organisations and projects that uh, would benefit from the SIL money. So if anybody knows of any organisations uh, that need anything, please don't hesitate to get in touch with Bradfield Parish Council. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Vicky. Um, Tim, do you want to say anything regarding Ecclesfield Parish Council? Yes. Um, do you want to come to one of the mics, please? Yeah, here you are. Yeah. Just introduce yourself, Tim, please. Oh, right. I'm Tim Whittaker. I'm uh, councillor for High Green on Ecclesfield Parish Council. Uh, just a few little things. We've had a Ukrainian coffee morning uh, where we, we was uh, close supplied, and this is obviously for the Ukrainian refugees we have in the area. Uh, we're not having any increase on the precept. Uh, we've had tree planting for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, 
in Chapel Town Park. Uh, right, our com parish community room has reopened uh, after it's just been refurbished uh, and it's eventually got the, the go ahead uh, on the 30th of January. So that's well uh, welcomed. Uh, in over the last quarter, we've given over £10,000 away in grants. Uh, Ecclesfield Priory players, uh, the, the Scout Sheffield Rainbows, uh, Thorncliffe Football Club, and French, Friends of Grenside Green as well, or a few of the people who've had some money from us. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for that. Uh, we now move on to item 10, which is the yeah. Budget. Thank you. I'm just going to move down to here so I can see the PowerPoint, otherwise I'm going to rick my neck. Um, so this is just a little bit of, a, of an update on uh, the lax £100,000 budget. I'll ask my colleagues to, to move me on because it will work much smoothly, much more smoothly if they do that. So we, we have this £100,000 budget which is for projects that are in line with the, with the community plan that was developed after consultation with people across uh, the area. Um, and we had previously at, at other meetings agreed £46,000 worth of expenditure. Um, there is an, an additional sum there which was agreed under delegated powers, uh, which is for projects under £5,000, essentially so that we can get on with small projects rather than waiting for the next meeting. Um, I did notice when I was preparing uh, this PowerPoint that in the uh, agenda pack in, and the formal documents on the internet, I'd managed to uh, add a typo. So the figure that's up there, 14772, is down as 14472. Um, in, the, in the papers. That's just a typo on my part. So if we move to the next slide, these are things that have been agreed since the last meeting that we are reporting back to you and we're asking uh, your, your councillors who are involved in these conversations on an ongoing basis just to formally note this evening. So there was a, a fund provided for additional youth work which when we looked at the bids received, um, the lack topped up because of the, the number of bids that we've received. There's been funding for uh, St Paul's Food Bank to have a new container to su uh, improve their storage to be able to support that. That's uh, St Paul's in Parson Cross, which is an East Ecclesfield ward. Um, a new high green lunch club is in the process of being launched. Um, Councillor Whitaker has been leading on that. Um, and in terms of what you've heard about tonight with everything that happened, during the gas incident, um, support was provided for the community centre, which opened at very short notice to be able to uh, provide that support, pay their own bills, etc. Um, and they, they stepped up at very short notice, so support has been provided for them. Um, in terms of that, should say parks rather than Parker, then it's another interesting typo. Um, we've agreed some additional gates, benches and bins for some of the sites uh, that we've been supporting through the year. We've also agreed two bollards on Priory Road uh, in uh, Ecclesfield, which has a long-standing uh, parking problem, and that will basically allow safe access to a junction where people are sometimes blocking the junction with their parking. And we've increased the ops budget, which means we can do things like uh, pay for rooms bookings, such as this. So those are all items since our last meeting that, that have been agreed so that we can get on with kind of business as usual. Um, the further recommendation for items above £5,000 is that um, we continue the programme that we've been doing really throughout uh, the north, particularly alongside the town and parish councils and some of the friends groups to look to upgrade our parks. Um, and as part of that, we'd like to replace the swings at the Rookery and Deep Car and Cross Lane Stocksbridge because in, in many areas, equipment has just come to the end of its uh, serviceable life. So there's a recommendation to the committee to agree that expenditure, which would mean um, a total allocation so far just below £72,000. And we would expect to bring another report to the next meeting uh, at the end of February with, with further expenditure on that budget. Thank, thank you very much, Dave. Th thanks for that, and thanks for the work you've done with the budget throughout the year. I think we've, you've done a really good job to get us where we are. It's not been easy at times, has it? <laughs> 
So has anybody any comments on it before we move on? We just need to agree. We can have a full review at the next uh, meeting in February. Thank you. You seek agreement? Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, item 11 then, draft local plan from Richard. Uh, that's me again. Um, Richard Holmes from the uh, strategic planning team in the planning service, City Council. So I'm here with uh, my colleagues Amy and Paul, uh, sat at the back there to talk to you about the draft Sheffield plan. So I'll try and move it on myself. There we go. <coughs> so I'll just quickly uh, go through what is the draft Sheffield plan, um, how does it affect North Sheffield, um, how can you comment, and what will happen to your comments. And when will the plan be finalised or adopted, as we call it? So it's the statutory local plan for the city. All uh, local planning authorities have to produce one. Uh, it sets out the wide vision and framework for the future development of the city. Uh, once adopted, it will uh, guide decisions on planning applications. Um, and planning decisions will be expected to be taken um, in accordance with the plan. As it goes through the various stages, which I'll explain later, it does gradually get more and more weight, um, but it won't, be, uh, it won't affect uh, planning decisions fully until it's finally adopted. So it covers the whole of the city except for the Peak District, which has its own uh, planning authority. Um, it covers the period up to 2039, uh, but there is a requirement to look to review the plan every five years. And it will replace the current local plan, which consists of the core strategy, which was approved in 2009, and the unitary development plan, which goes all the way back to 1998. Um, so the plan will identify or allocate land to be developed for different uses, uh, housing, employment, shopping, uh, identifies where land should be protected, such as uh, in the green belt. Um, sets out new requirements for design, um, for example, space standards in new homes. Um, it will set out ambitions for transport and travel, um, better public transport and active travel connections. Um, and there's a, a whole raft of transport policies as part of the plan. And it will look to secure developer contributions towards community benefits, such as affordable housing. Um, that will be through the community infrastructure levy, uh, and also through uh, Section 106 agreements. Um, now, those levels have been set um, to achieve the maximum benefit possible from development, but they're also limited by viability, so we can't set those, those rates too high, uh, which will challenge viability of development. So the uh, plan actually consists of various parts. The part one is... Um, the vision and the spatial strategy, and I mentioned earlier when I was um, answering those questions, it, it, has, it allocates different sub-areas of the city uh, and has different uh, policy approaches to those sub-areas. It also allocates sites for specific development. Part two is the development management policy, so they're sort of topic-based policies which will be particularly relevant for determining planning applications. Um, the site allocations are set out in a detailed document, Annex A. There's also uh, Annex B parking guidelines. Uh, there's a key diagram which kind of uh, brings together all the kind of spatial approach for the city as a whole. Uh, and there's a policies map which we've got examples of out to the back there. Um, the easiest way to look at that is online because you can zoom in and out and you can switch le uh, different layers of information off and on depending on what you're interested in. Uh, but we have reproduced those as best we can as paper copies at the back there. And there's many supporting documents, there's at least 50 uh, I think that are uh, on the website which cover uh, housing requirements, uh, employment land requirements, viability infrastructure provision, retail and leisure, biodiversity, many others. Um, so those documents are all available online on the consultation webpage. We do have paper copies of all the background documents if you'd rather look at those at Howden House, but we've only got one copy of all of those, so that's the only place you can go to view those. Uh, but the main documents are all available in First Points and in the libraries. 
So, to, to quickly to the North Lack area, uh, there's two sub areas that fit wholly within the North Lack. So, there's Stocksbridge, Deep Car, Chapeltown, and High Green. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, again, there's also parts of our North West sub area that fall within the North Lack as well. Um, so, just I'll try and speed through these. So, Stocksbridge, Deep Car. Um, there's 12 allocated sites, some of those already have planning permission, um, 928 new homes, that doesn't include the Holland Busk site that uh, recently got granted planning permission, um, but that's out of about 35,500 um, um, housings, housing requirements for the whole of the city. Um, there's three strate strategic sites um, identified there, I'm not going through those. Um, which are larger sites uh, for housing development. There's also uh, a relatively small area of employment land designated in deep car. Um, but the key message here, that all, all development sites and allocations are within the urban area in Brownfield, on Brownfield sites. We're not proposing any changes to the Greenbelt boundary. Um, there's also policies to support the district centre at Stocksbridge and Fox Valley. Uh, and various local centres that have been identified. Uh, and there's also some sustainable transport improvements uh, proposed, including support for the reopening of the Don Valley rail line uh, and a mass transit corridor from the city centre to the upper Don Valley. Uh, turning to North, Chef uh, so Chapeltown and High Green sub area. Um, not a lot of development proposed there, so only 25 new homes. Um, although there are some others identified um, that have planning permission. Um, uh, a reasonable amount of employment land. Again, no change to the, the Greenbelt boundary. Again, uh, support for the um, district centre at Chapel Town and local centres. Um, and also protection for existing employment land at Thorncliff. Um, I'll just mention again, I think I touched on this when I was uh, responding to the questions earlier, in terms of Stannington and this, this part of the uh, North Lack, um, because the Greenbelt boundary is key and it's, it's drawn very tightly and it also washes over certain areas, um, very little um, development is proposed in this area. Um, so it covers Stannington, Loxley, Worrell, Utebridge, Wancliffe side. And there are a couple of minor, uh, relatively small um, housing allocations proposed at Utebridge Lane, Platts Lane, um, Wigan Farm in Worrell. Um, there's also the Utah Bridge Mill development, which is mainly in Barnsley, although part of that site does fall, fall within Sheffield. Okay, so the, we're in the uh, process of public consultation, started on the 9th of January, it runs for six weeks, the 20th of February. Um, we're asking um, residents to tell us whether the plan. Um, is suitable to meet future development needs and whilst also protecting the environment, um, is properly justified in terms of um, the wording of the policies and the allocations. Uh, is it deliverable? So um, that's about not asking for too much in terms of policies, um, policies that, can, that are realistic and can be delivered. Uh, and is it consistent with the government planning policies and the national planning policy framework? Um, now, after the public consultation, um, there will be representations made and the council uh, may uh, agree with some of those representations uh, and can, we can propose our own modifications to the plan. So these will probably be um, relatively minor things that we may be missed out, um, where we may be got some policy wording slightly wrong. Um, so part of that, uh, the next stage of the consultation will be uh, the council probably proposing some amendments to the plan. Um, but this, this plan is basically the council has approved this. It's been through full council. It got unanimous approval at full council. Um, so the next stage of the process is that these, um, the plan with amendments will be submitted to the government. Uh, the government will appoint a planning inspector who will oversee uh, a public examination. So just to kind of uh, run through the various stages of the public consultations where we are now, uh, I mentioned that the next stage will be the submission of the plan to the government. So that will be after 
we've processed the representations, the comments made, uh, and then submitted those. So that will be sometime in the summer, hopefully. After that, the government will appoint an independent planning inspector, and then the public examination will be arranged. Um, probably late summer, uh, autumn, probably being realistic, but that's kind of out of our hands. That's, that's down to the, uh, the government inspector and when they're available. Um, once we've been through that examination, um, there will be modifications proposed to the plan uh, by the inspector, uh, and they have to go out for public consultation as well, so that will be uh, summer, autumn 2024. Uh, and then all being well, we can finally formally adopt the plan. Uh, we're hoping that will be um, December 2024. So it is quite a... It is quite a long-winded process. It's quite a sort of formal process. It's, it's bound up by um, regulations, um, but we're, we're going as quickly as we can. Okay, that's all from me, so thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Richard. Th thanks to you and, and your team. Uh, it's been a torturous route to get to where we are, uh, but I think we're getting there. Uh, before I ask members first, I'll just ask if anybody out there wants to comment or, or ask a question? No? Yes, certainly. Um, you get a mic. Just a second, we can all hear one. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is David Holmes. I'm from the Friends of the Loxley Valley Community Group. Um, we met last week and discussed the preliminary views about the local plan. Um, I think most community groups will be we're broadly supportive. Uh, we very welcome the protection, very much welcome the protection of the green belt. Um, the process is complicated and it's long. Um, while we're supportive, it wouldn't surprise me if some would-be developers with their eyes on certain sites would be less supportive and may offer very different views to ours. And I wonder at what point in this process, if we find that other people have argued strongly against protecting certain sites, at what point can we then counter those arguments? Is that at, at the stage where it goes to the planning inspector, or is it at an earlier stage? Yeah, it, it will be at the public examination. So um, the, the comments that are made will be like, processed by the council. We'll kind of try and group them into particular topics or particular areas, uh, they'll then be submitted and the inspector will decide how the examination is run and how they, but, but yeah, you'll have an opportunity. If as part of your uh, comments, your representations on this draft, uh, one of the questions you'll be asked is, would you like to appear at the examination? So you can say, you know, you can say yes, you can change your mind later if, if you don't think it's appropriate, but um, if you think it would be helpful um, to appear at that examination and be in the same room as the developers who are arguing a different point of view, uh, then yeah, you, you can do that and the inspector will be happy for you to come along to, to those sessions. Thanks, Richard. Mike, do you want to come in? Thank you. Thanks, Jack. <coughs> yes, the developers will not be happy because they like to build on virgin green land because they make the most money there. That's the way it works. However, Two years ago, we had an issue as an options consultation with the public over six weeks about what they wanted, and over 80% of them wanted no development in the Green Belt. We fully backed that, and it was a, this council that agreed back in March that we would maintain the Green Belt boundaries where they were, and we could still meet the housing criteria for building in brownfield land and within the urban area. So. We've protected it, we've protected the Green Belt, and believe me, before that, there were developers all over the Green Belt surveying for housing. We stopped. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mike said part of it already about protecting the Green Belt, but the other thing I wanted to say is Richard mentioned briefly the Peak District, uh, and for those who don't know, the Peak District National Park has its own planning authority, even though quite a large percentage of it is within Sheffield. Um, the boundary is where the dams are at this end, and uh, Lower Bradfield and Higher Bradfield are all in the Peak District, and it goes right out of the city. 
and into Manchester and beyond. So, um, as it is a third of the landmass in Stannington Ward, it is worth pointing out that we don't have, as a city council, the authority over the peak planning area. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much then, Richard. Thank you. Th thanks, everybody, for contributing. It's been a real good and interesting meeting. Uh, the, our next meeting is uh, at High Green on Thursday, the 23rd of February at 6 o'clock. I hope we can have some more displays and presentations prior to that. Um, before you do go, um, we've still got um, the police, I think. Yeah, at the back. We've got libraries and we've got Yorkshire Water and, of course, the local plan. Um, libraries are currently undergoing a consultation and it's for the main libraries, uh, the City Council libraries, not the volunteer-led libraries like Stannington. But they're looking to change some of the opening hours, trying to standardise them. And uh, So there's a consultation going out to members of the public. Uh, so if you could have a look at that uh, before you go, it's, it's certainly interesting and get people's views of, uh, of how libraries will be shaped. Uh, so the nearest sort of libraries we're talking about here is uh, Hillsborough uh, City and uh, there's, there's others and the other one in, in the north is, is the Chapel Town Library. The Stocksbridge, uh, sorry, the Stocksbridge, I'm not sure about the Stocksbridge. Yep, Stocksbridge as well. Uh, but the, the, the uh, volunteer run at Ecclesfield and Stannington won't be affected here. So thank you all for your attendance. Safe journey home. It's not snowing, I believe, so we're okay. Normally January is a, a horrendous time to have a meeting, but thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll be around afterwards, all the councillors, if anybody wants.